happy at Jusia. Hello, friends. It's me, Catherine Ivers Norton, the author of The Stain, for our 13th Facebook jail session. It is November 26, 2021. I am doing two today um, because I'm running out of Facebook jail time and I want to wrap it up this weekend. So um, let's see. So um, in chapter 13, Sergey's mood is improved. He's agreed to attend a New Year's Eve party at Lena and Piotr's house in the enclave near St. Petersburg. Um, and incredibly, he's allowing Cassandra to go a day early to spa, dine, shop before girls night party um, at a nightclub. And she is beyond excited. This is great. So um, this, of course, will all be done under the supervision of bodyguard Ilya, who he doesn't know is her secret friend. Um, and uh, and of course, Slava Valkov will not be on the guest list for the New Year's Eve party. So, but that's okay. She's she's looking forward to it. this. Is good because you know, in our Russia, you need to get out once in a while, right? All right. A few of Lena's other girlfriends arrived after dinner, followed by a team of hairdressers who put up our hair, put our hair up in party styles for the nightclub. We took turns making up each other's faces until we looked like models in a pop music video. We had a six-girl party posse ready to hit the club. Ilya rode in the front of the limo while David, uh, with David while the girls popped champagne bottles and pre-partied in the back. The bubbly flowed and the effort effervescent energy continued to build. When the girls talked about the hot guys at the club and how they would do some sexy bumping and grinding tonight. Wild woman brigade, woo! We spilled out of the limo, champagne flutes in hand and walked right into the club, bypassing the long line of people waiting in the freezing weather to get in. VIP status, woo! Electronic dance music with lots of flashing lights greeted us inside the club. There were couches and tables around the periphery, but the center was all dance floor. Costumed, scantily clad women danced in big bird cages strung from the ceiling. This place was popping. I tried to act cool, but I was awestruck. I'd never been to a nightclub like this before. We'd made our way to the bar and Lena ordered a round of their signature drink, vodka with God knows what else in a tall glass. I called it a Russian rocket because it immediately made my night take off. There was a VIP area in an open mezzanine level upstairs where local celebrities hung out, but I didn't care about them. I just wanted to dance. Ilya was a conservative dancer, but he had no, pro uh, no trouble keeping up with me. He was dressed stylishly in black slacks and a matching designer sweater that hugged the rugged terrain of his muscled upper body. To top it off, he wore a black fedora with a broad white band that made him look like a gangster. He was, uh, he was cool, funky, sexy, and far more fashionable than I ever expected. I wholeheartedly approved. There is no way Sergei would have ever been that much fun. Hot date, woo! Ellie stayed close to me throughout the night, giving the appearance we were a couple was one way to discourage unwanted attention, but I knew this must be a departure from the professional bodyguard handbook. The girls found no shortage of good looking men for dancing. Ilya remained alert for signs of trouble, but that didn't mean we couldn't have fun. On breaks from dancing, we joined our party resting on the couches. Ilya leaned back and drew me close to rest on his arm. I was sure this affectionate display was unnecessary, but I could not object to the way his firm body felt against mine. I noticed how easily it was to let my guard down and relax with Ilya. I was always on edge with my husband, trying to avoid conflict. An image of Sergei's scowling face flashed through my mind. He would not be pleased to see me so cozy with this young man. I had to remind myself once again that this was Ilya's job, not an actual date, biting my lower lip with regret. The party didn't begin to wind down until after 4 a.m. We were taking one last turn on the dance floor with Lena and David when a large drunken man started dancing lewdly between them. He spewed a litany of indecent proposals on Lena. She dismissed him with an icy look as only she could. Then he stumbled a jagged line toward me. Ilya stepped in front of him and told him to back off. The 
drunk kept coming, trying to push the bodyguard aside. Ilya gripped his arm. By this time, the dancing stopped and everyone backed away, the situation garnering the attention of two bouncers. The man lunged at Ilya, surprising him with a vicious headbutt. A brief scramble ended with a vile man on his back with Ilya's boot on his neck. The bouncers picked up the drunk who thrashed wildly and dragged him to the rear of the club to, uh, to throw out the back door like trash. Hot, sweaty, and stunned, I looked into the face of my savior and saw there was blood flowing down his cheek. I ran to get towels from the bar, then carefully dabbed his face. There was a horizontal gash across his right cheekbone, glancing, a glancing swipe from the offender's signet ring, perhaps. I wanted to take him to a hospital for stitches, but he said no. Lena agreed that butterfly bandages would probably take care of it. What a night, she declared, beaming. Let's get this hero home. Once locked safely in our suite, I tended to Ilya's wound in, with great care. He sat in a chair as I washed his face with warm soapy, with a warm soapy washcloth, and then cl cleaned the wound with hydrogen peroxide, cringing in empathy when it stung. I carefully closed the gap with two butterfly bandages, dabbing antibiotic ointment on top for insurance. There was not much to be done for the growing bruise on his forehead, but applying a cool compress made me feel better about it. I couldn't help notice the bruise and bandages gave him a distinct after the game hockey player look. I always had a thing for hockey players, but I was too, I was too shy to date one. Caution, Cassandra, I warned myself. After what happened with Slava Valkov, I, I most certainly knew better. And yet, I found myself gazing into his smoldering brown eyes anyway. My breath caught and glanced at his mouth and saw his firm, full lips slightly parted. Something about that made me salivate. I swallowed hard and risked another look at his beautiful eyes to see him watching me. I leaned in closer. With animal instinct overpowering intellect, I brushed my lips ever so slightly against him, shooting an arc of sparks across tinder skin. I was being sucked into a black hole of desire and struggled to pull myself back from the brink. Druzia, I whispered urgently, vainly, a friend. Druzia, da. He replied. He lightly touched my lower lip with the tip of his finger, eliciting a slight involuntary gasp. My lips parted and he advanced with a deep soul-filled kiss full of sweet promises. My heart swelled with forbidden feelings and my primed body responded like roses blooming for a honeybee. His tongue found mine and we danced slowly and deliberately exploring, tasting, feeling each other intimately lighting a slow burning fire that would be difficult to extinguish. I dissolved into Ilya's kiss. When he finally pulled away, I opened my eyes and gazed at him with wonder, appreciating his truly sensual nature for the first time. Druzia, he asked huskily. Da, Druzia, I, re I repeated with a pout. Ilya lifted me in his strong arms and carried me to the bedroom, where he placed me gently on the turned down bed. He lay behind me and held me close in his protective arms. My heart relaxed and opened, enveloped in the bubble of safety he provided. Ilyusha, I breathed. He responded with a gentle squeeze. I could fall in love with him so easily. Perhaps I already have, I wondered, as we fell asleep, nested like spoons. Ah. <laughs> hmm. Well, oh, I'll let you figure this one out. So clearly, there's a little more going on with Elia and Cassandra. She knows better. It was happening anyway. Sometimes you can't help it, right? I guess. I don't know. Um, 
So feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. I appreciate any feedback. I uh, I like this. It's so sweet and uh, innocent almost. And uh, I don't know. This is nice. So anyway, um, we'll have to pick this up in the next chapter and see uh, what happens on New Year's Eve when Sergey shows up to that party. And uh, in the meantime, I don't know, like, I, if we can all just think back to a time where we kiss somebody we really liked and it's kind of like sweet, and exciting, and you don't know what's going to happen. I like that feeling. That's a nice, simple, innocent kind of feeling and um, one of the great pleasures of being alive, I suppose. So um, anyway, if you can recall that that feeling or that sense of joy or whatever that was in that shining moment and just relive it for a few minutes, um, and let that dispel some of the darkness of this time of year because now we're it's late November we're, we're we're closely approaching the shortest day of the year and it is getting dark early and uh and it's overcast and grim and all that stuff so it wears on your spirit but we all have these moments of pure joy and like postcards in our mind and we can just recall them at, at will and it just like summon up some of those memories and uh see if that can brighten a little and uh, you day a little in this darkness. So anyway, just a thought, do whatever you want. Obviously I can't, I can't make you do anything, but um, that's my suggestion. So anyway, I have a great evening and I'll see you tomorrow with something from chapter 14. All right, bye.